First up, though, let's talk to the Chief Executive of the NHS Confederation. That's the body that represents all the NHS trusts in, the, uh, in England. And that's Neil Dixon, who joins us once again. Good morning to you, Neil. Good morning. Um, what did you make of what uh, Mary Hancock had to say, uh, in t specifically in terms of his uh, pledge to hit that target of 100,000 tests a day? Do you think it's doable? Well, I don't think it's clear whether it's doable. I assume he's got a degree of confidence around it. But, of course, the, the, the point is that it appears to include the antibody testing, as has just been said. And the point is we still do not yet have a green light for any antibody test, uh, which we could apply universally. And as, again, he pointed out, I agree it was a standout moment where he said, you know, they tested one of these things and three out of four of the results were, were wrong. Uh, and as it's a binary test, I think that's probably worse than if you put uh, uh, one thing in because you're, you're half the time you might be able to get it you right. Could just, you could just toss a coin over whether or not you you've could. had coronavirus. I think also, uh, again, something I had not realised, and I've been having a look at a lot of these test obviously my family we, we believe we all caught this on the, the 13th of March uh, we don't know no way of no absolutely we're not remotely priorities uh, for getting tested we're not key workers um, uh, and, uh, and we're safely at home not infecting anyone else but uh, the, the idea that it's uh, 28 days before the antibodies can definitely be showing up in which case having these tests for the last few weeks where everyone's been clamoring to get these tests would have been a complete waste of time given that uh, we you know it's very likely that a lot of people have been catching the virus in recent weeks yeah, do you know, I, there is a danger in all this that we see uh, pan, um, testing as a panacea. And I know yeah. that the World Health Organization has talked about test, 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 and so on. And it obviously is very important. But when you test and what you test for will vary depending on where you are in the in the pandemic and you do have to remember for the other test the antigen test that's the one is have you got it or have, or, or, or have you currently got it um, if you're asymptomatic if you haven't got any symptoms the test is likely to be negative people kind of think again it's a magic thing that'll show have I got it or haven't I got it well uh, it only is going to show you if you've got it if you are if you have got symptoms as it were which is why a lot of the concentration on staff testing is really actually much more about the relatives the people or your family members at home because what's happening is doctors and nurses and so forth are having to self-isolate because they think a member of their family had it as i say i spoke to one who'd a uh, chap whose uh, daughter had uh, had a high temperature on one day. As a result, he had to self-isolate for 14 days and take himself uh, away from the hospital where he has a very senior role. So, uh, you know, it's that kind of stuff that, that releases it. So, And the other thing which I thought was another standout moment for the press conference was this issue of surveillance, which we haven't heard an awful lot around, but there is a massive surveillance program being set up through Port and Down. And this is going to be really important in understanding how the virus is spreading, where it is spreading, and there's lots of testing going on for that purpose. So people are being tested and then that then it's just providing a picture of who they are, where they are, and how the virus is spreading. And that, again, will be absolutely vital in understanding how the thing is spread. But as I say, not a panacea. No, absolutely not. Um, oh, can I also talk to you about the uh, writing off of £13.4 billion pounds of NHS debt? A lot of people wondering wh um, whether or not that is relevant to uh, getting the work done, given that the government is supposed to be you know, providing whatever funds any NHS trust, anybody in the healthcare service needs. Uh, why is that significant? I think it's probably less significant as of this minute, though it'll you know, certainly be, there'll be a lot of silent cheering going on I think within the within the health service I think the more important moment for that will be as we start to emerge and remember when we start to emerge from all this whether it's in three months six months or whenever they there, there will be a mess left behind the health service will have massive backlogs of more routine work uh, waiting lists everything else there'll just be a huge amount for the health service to do to get itself back into even the state it was in, which was pretty pressured, I have to say, before all this started. So I think wiping out that debt is, is a fantastic move, and it really does, I think, give us a chance both to two things. One, clear up that backlog, and secondly, get on with the transformation of the health service, because wonderful though the health service is, all our members are clear that it's unsustainable as a model going forward, because we just haven't got a money tree, and we're all going to have to pay in some ways for all this 
bailout at the moment, and that's going to make it even more difficult going forward. Therefore, the way we organise the health service, the way we run it, I think will have to change. And interestingly enough, a lot of changes have happened very quickly as a result of this. Things like outpatients, you know, the idea of just pushing them online, getting them via phone calls, getting them uh, th- through video links, all sorts of things that actually the health service, you know, usually takes quite a lot of time to persuade clinicians to move these things on to new, new formats. And I think that the speed with which that's been done. So we will have to certainly learn from all yes. the new and exciting things that have happened even during this period. Yeah, absolutely. Just finally, I want to ask you about PPE, uh, personal protective equipment. Uh, yesterday, um, uh, Matt Hancock said that the standards had been upgraded. He said the 45 million new items have been delivered to the front line on Wednesday. We're still here hearing from frontline staff saying they haven't got either any or the right equipment that they need. You know, care home staff are saying the same as well. Uh, when we're assured by the government that they're on top of this now, can we trust them? Well, you will inevitably get with a health service, to be fair. You will inevitably get uh, places that, uh, you know, something isn't, isn't working uh, as it should. That said, the level of concern around PPE has been really high, and I think there has been a loss of confidence. I think I've said that to you before, Julia. So I think there is, that, first of all, the good news yesterday was that we've got real consensus now. So WHO backing our guidance the Royal College is backing the guidance and so forth. So I think that's important to try and give some reassurance to staff who, frankly, you know, are very, very, a lot of staff are pretty sceptical around all this. So we've got better guidance. It's clearer. I hope that will restore confidence. And we've kind of resolved any differences. We do have differences between the UK and the rest of the world. But basically, WHO are saying our standards are absolutely in line. In some cases, they're, they're higher standards than WHO. In, in, in a couple of cases, is not least about having our arms bare. We're, we're slightly different from elsewhere in the world, but there are good reasons why we are. Okay. The other thing that you've touched on is the supply chain, and there's no doubt it, it fell over. But what they've done since then, I think, is basically push out millions of items. Uh, so it's not, not necessarily a very sophisticated approach, especially for these smaller customers, as it were, the care homes, the GP surgeries. It's now promising to be more sophisticated. We'll have to see it. They're promising. They've got a hotline up. Military are behind it. They're also setting up an Amazon-style ordering system. Should come in next week. Well, let's just see where it goes. So, I mean, I'm neutral on this. I know that they've done Herculean efforts to try and make this happen. We'll just have to see how it goes on the ground. But again, we've got to restore confidence among staff in this because it's absolutely vital. Absolutely. And Neil Dixon, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Chief Executive of the NHS Confederation representing NHS Trust across England.